So to start off, I'd just like to give you an overview of the session. So first of all, it's aimed at everybody. So from senior leaders to classroom practitioners down to operational staff. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a journey, if you like. I'm going to tell you how we're using the Sims Parent app at Honiton. I'm going to be very brave and I'm going to do two live demonstrations for you. One of the actual app itself, so you'll be able to see what the parents see. Um, and I'm also going to give you a demonstration of the behind the scenes, if you like, so what the admin sees, okay? And I think that's quite important for you to look at because it enables you to make decisions about what you can turn on and off in terms of the parent app and you can see what you can and can't publish, okay? Um, and as Janet said, at the end there'll be an opportunity for questions, okay? Um, so a little bit about Honiton first. So we're a secondary school. Uh, we've got a sixth form, we're medium size, about 750 students. We're very lucky to be in a nice rural setting um, and we've been a single academy trust since 2011. We were rated Ofsted good in our last inspection in 2016, so we're waiting for the dreaded call as it stands now, um, so anytime soon. Um, but linked to this presentation, it's important for me to say that SIMS really is embedded I mean, everything that we do in the classroom. So every teacher has access and it is used during every lesson to record things like attendance, behavior, achievement, those sorts of things, okay? Um, and for a number of years now, we've had the vision of making SIMS our single point of access for student information. So we try to put as much as we can through SIMS and make as much as we can available through SIMS. So where we might have a spreadsheet to record something, we've really looked at can we put that information into SIMS, can we make a mark sheet out of it, and where possible we've brought everything into that one platform. Um, not 100%, not everything is there, but we're certainly getting there. Um, so a little bit about our journey. So. I have to take you back a little bit in time to when we implemented Sims Learning Gateway. How many of you are familiar with that product? Okay, um, I'll give you a little bit of an explanation. Sims Learning Gateway, if you like, is the first iteration of what is Parent App now. Um, it was a way of providing Sims information in a web portal to parents, okay? Um, and we implemented that some time ago. However, um, it wasn't really intuitive it was a web-based product, so it wasn't an app, and therefore it didn't work very effectively on devices like this. Um, and we found from the feedback that we had that parents really struggled with how it used, how it looked and how it was used. And last but not least, I suppose, is the heavy admin burden that it placed on the college itself. Um, it has a unique way of doing usernames and passwords. The passwords were very complex, and our IT support team were kind of bombarded with requests from parents um, to reset passwords all the time because whenever pass parents wanted to actually go into the portal they couldn't remember the password because it was so complex um, and I think in the end parents switched off from using that product so although we had it I don't think it was very it was used very effectively um, so we'll fast forward now to probably late 2017 and we all knew that GDPR was coming and we had a deadline to meet of the 25th of May and as many of you probably did, as we did, we had to look at our own internal processes about how we would become compliant with GDPR. Um, and we had numerous processes that we needed to improve, but one of those surrounded data collection, and primarily data collection into SIMS. And we were, just to give you an example, sending data collection sheets out with students. That data collection sheet contained a lot of sensitive information about a lot of different people. It often went home in bags, probably never reached the parent, um, and nine times out of ten it never actually got back to the college to input any changes. Um, so we were coupled with a problem of inaccurate data within our SIM system, but also sending out a lot of sensitive information in a not very secure way. Um, and it's interesting, I've been reflecting recently, especially with the closures, snow closures, that actually we rely on the information within our management information systems to be accurate to in order to communicate with parents effectively. And it's almost expected that we're going to communicate with parents in real time. They're gonna get a text message or they're gonna get an email when something happens. And if we don't have the right information in SIMS, then it doesn't work. Um, and it's interesting, I was also reflecting that I was thinking, with these recent snow closures. Actually, how did we do that before we had email and we had text? Um, certainly, it uh, took a longer amount of time than it does now. Um, 
so in order to solve that GDPR problem that we had, we were looking around on the marketplace to see how we could solve that problem. We were looking at various different ways. We looked at web-based kind of form sites, if you like, a way of collecting the data from parents that would come in electronically. But we were still coupled with the same problem that the information would come in electronically, but it wouldn't make its way back into SIMS itself. Somebody would still have to key in that information into SIMS. Um, and we came across the SIMS parent app, and that is the light version of the app, which is free. So it's at no cost to your school to implement it. And it has within it an online data collection tool, which enables a registered parent to click a few buttons and essentially update their information directly back into the SIM system. So they go in, they add a telephone number, anything like that. Um, that information goes back to an admin person in the school on a dashboard and they approve the request or deny the request, but approve the request. So essentially any data that's getting written back is with your approval. So it's not just going to get written back without any knowledge, um, which, is, which is very good. Also, just to say that information about that is on the SOMIS website if you wanted to, to find out a little bit more. There's an FAQ um, about the parent app, Lite. Um, also, just to say with the Lite version, parents register themselves and they can link their Google, their Facebook, their Twitter accounts into that system. So when it comes back to the problem I was talking about earlier with having to remember complex passwords, that's taken completely out of the equation with this because they're using a login and password that they're familiar with with another product. Um, so once we'd had the Sims Parent app light, um, we started to look at the full version. The full version enables you to publish information that's in your SIM system, such as achievement information, behavior, attendance, and reports. SCOMIS very kindly came down and gave us a demonstration of that product. It's very graphical, it's very intuitive to use, um, and when compared with SIMS Learning Gateway, it's a breath of fresh air, essentially. Um, we immediately saw the potential of that as a replacement for SLG. And there was a month gap between us having the light version and us actually saying, right, we want to pay for the full version, let's, let's go for it. Um, so how do we use it? I think I've covered some of this already, but we publish all of our attendance information, all of our conduct, so that's achievement and behavior logs, um, and we also publish our reports out to parents that way. We no longer print any reports and give them to parents. The parents log in through the app and they get the reports that way as a downloadable PDF. So we've taken the very brave decision to ditch the, the printing that we were, we were doing. Parents are able to see the child's timetable. Students have a separate app called the Sims Student app and they're able to view their own timetable via that on their smartphone devices. And we're having internal discussions at the moment about phasing out the printing of the student's timetable at the start of every academic year. Again, a cost, something that probably we don't need to do now. Data collection is heavily used within it. Um, and as I said, that was the primary method or primary reason that we moved. Um, and we've currently got a working group which is looking at how Sims homework works and how that integrates through to the app as well. Um, this next bit shocked me compared to our response with Sims Learning Gateway, effectively. Um, we had a very positive response from parents. Um, within two days of sending out the invitation emails to register, we had 130 parents registered onto the system. Within two months, 400. Um, and as I stand here now, we have 500 plus parents registered on our system, which is about 70% of our school. And that's growing kind of week by week all with minimal workload. So that burden I was talking about at the beginning with admin in IT has completely been removed. The parents register themselves. All is we do is send out an invitation link and they do the rest. Um, we found that the more we send out those invitations, that seems to trigger more people to register. Um, and we also keep advertising it through parents' evenings and through newsletters as well. So obviously our goal is to get the whole school um, signed up onto it. Um, but more importantly, what has the impact been? So for us, it's the increased awareness, I think, of the data that they can now see within SIM, so that attendance information, more awareness of behaviour logs and achievement logs. Um, it's facilitated those conversations at parents' evenings, and it's also helped us with an admin process in terms of our year six to seven transition. And that's getting the data in our SIM system accurate 
at the moment that they, those students join the school in Year 7. It significantly reduced our admin time and our costs. Just removing the report printing out has saved a huge amount of money. Our data capture time has been reduced, so we've no longer got admin people needing to actually do those changes in the SIM system. It's not been completely removed, obviously, but um, it certainly saved a lot. And overnight, it stopped all those kind of password requests coming in from parents with SLG. Um, so that's been a big plus for us. But more importantly, the whole reason that we started this, if you remember, was around GDPR, and it really has mitigated the risks of the data loss that we were potentially um, exposing ourselves to, and also the increased level of accuracy that we now have in our SIM system. So getting started with it, implementing it, it was very easy to set up. SCOMIS helped us with that, and Janet and Liam will talk about the FAQs that are available to get that set up. It's a very, very easy process. In terms of the app themselves, parents download it, so they go to the corresponding app store for either Apple or Android, um, but there's also a web-based version of it that they can use on a normal PC or an Apple computer. And essentially, as I've said already, parents will associate their Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter account with that platform, and then that just facilitates the logging and making it a bit easier. Um, but surprisingly, we haven't to date done any training with parents in order to use it. We haven't needed to do that. They found it really intuitive to use. And we've done no training with ICT or admin staff inside the school. We just haven't needed to do that. People have picked it up very, very easily. Um, what are our next steps? So we really want to get under the hood and start to measure the engagement and the impact of it. Um, as I said, we've got the working group investigating SIMS homework, so that's an important development for us. And we're going to start to look at how we use the SIMS calendar. And what I mean by that is that at the moment we publish a lot of our stuff by our, our website, and we really want to start getting that one-stop shop for parents. So putting our calendar through this app as well um, means that parents only have one place um, to go. And we're going to continue to promote the system with the harder to reach parents. And that's through targeted one-to-one -one sessions, asking them into, into school, showing them the app and doing some, a little bit of training with them and promoting what it actually can be used for. So in a nutshell, that's how us at Honiton have made use of the app. Now comes the brave part on my part. I'm now actually going to show you it. Um, if you can just bear with me for a second while I get that part of the demo up and running. Yes, it, look, um, it looks like it, yeah. And was it much of a transition from Sims Lite to the... No, it was none. It was just a few more buttons were activated. Yeah, essentially you have a license code and a patch that gets applied that yeah. opens up the full functionality. So once you've done the light, if you're happy like we were with how it was going and how it was being implemented, you just do the next step and it just opens up that, that functionality. So yeah. Chargeable, yeah. So light is... I think Janet's got the... Yeah, it was very expensive. Yeah. yeah. It goes on per pupil number, there's a primary and secondary charge. I have got the prices here. If you want to know, just come and speak to me afterwards. I've got the prices here. It's important that you've mentioned the Sims Learning Gateway and the pricing, because obviously we were using that. What? Yeah. There's a discount package if you've got SLG and you're going to move over to Parent App. So, in other words, for us, we, the money that we were spending on SLG just moved, if you like, to Parent App. Did you find um, the uptake was improved by going to the full version? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. But obviously the primary reason initially was the data collection yeah. side. I mean, we use Parent Life, we don't yeah. use the full version. Yeah. The uptake hasn't been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Data um, collection on the light version, you can collect data through that way. Yeah. And it comes in for the approver. Yeah, okay. it works in exactly the same way. It's just the other bits. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm going to demo to you two things now, and I'm going to show you directly on the iPad. Okay, 
I'm going to log in and I'm going to show you what a parent actually sees through the app. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do a second demonstration, which is the behind the scenes bit, which is what you as an administrator can control. So what you can customize, what you can switch on and what you can switch off and what you can configure. And I think it's important for you to see that bit because when we were looking at this product, we were very interested in what we could um, display to parents, but also there were some bits that we weren't comfortable with displaying to parents and we needed to know if we could switch those off. Okay, so um, it's an important part. Um, before I go into the demo, what you're going to see now is not Honiton Community College's um, student information. Okay, obviously very aware of GDPR. What you are going to see is a test set of data. Okay, so I'm going to go straight in. So just to say that I've auto logged in as a parent at this point, okay? So the step before this is where the parent would put their username and their password in and log in. When they go into the uh, app, this is what they get presented with. You can configure this to be different colors and you can put some graphics on it and those sorts of things. So you can customize it to a degree. Um, it's not fantastic, but at least you can put a little bit of school branding on it if you want to. Um, we'll go into messages first of all. So for those of you that are used to using apps and those sorts of things, you'll notice that you will get push notifications to you via some of the apps that you may use. This is the same technology, okay? So you can see here that it's telling me things like Sophie had 100% attendance for week 25th of the second. Those sorts of things get pushed out to the parent, okay? Through notifications and you can turn those on or off and I'll show you that in a second. But they all get aggregated in this bit here, okay? Um, and if I were to tap on any of those, it would take me to the corresponding bit in the app, okay? But you can um, see what that shows as, it, as I go through. So we go back. Um, the calendar is the calendar. So if you're using the Sims calendar section, anything you choose to publish would be displayed here. Parents can scroll through it. Um, and I've got three children attached to this Sims parent app record, okay? So I'm gonna go into Chris. So I tap Chris. And it now gives me a overview, if you like, for Chris. So each of those boxes are called widgets. And within those widgets, it's given me a little bit of summary information. So attendance, conduct, assessment, homework, timetable, and reports. Those are the bits that are in the full version. Okay, so if you have the light, you're only going to see the bottom bit, which is data collection. All right. So if I go into attendance, tap. Okay, what I'm seeing here is AM and PM and lesson registration, okay? And if I tap on any of the marks, I can see a little bit more information about it. Apologies, I don't know what's happened with the lesson one attendance there, um, but we can look at that. Um, for primary school colleagues, you don't have to show lesson attendance for secondary, you can, all right? So, con I can, I'll show you that. Yeah, there's some settings around that functionality. So, yes, yeah, yeah. So go into conduct. And again, this will depend on how you've got this configured in your own school setting. Um, but again, the parent can see. And the little widget gives me an overview for the week. Okay. Um, assessment is pulling through those mark sheets in Sims Assessment Manager that I choose to publish. So again, by tapping on it, this will depend on how you've got your assessment system configured in Sims. Go back. If you're using Sims homework, I can see that Chris has got two pieces that are overdue. Tut tut. I tap. Yeah. Um, I tap. I can see what homework is overdue. And if I tap into that homework, I can see a little bit more information about it. And I can download the attachment. Okay, timetable is timetable, obviously more secondary related than primary. Um, reports, so if you're publishing your reports through SIMS, um, you can access them here and there is a PDF, so you just download it, tap, and once it's downloaded like that, you can then interact with the normal functionality that you'd find in an iPad or Android, so you can print, email it, whatever you want, um, but it's there. Um, and for us, because we've been publishing reports for years and years and years, 
all the historical stuff is there as well, so they can go back and they can look at previous ones. Um, and then finally, I'll show you the data collection. So we tap. Um, you can configure what the parents is able to change at this point, okay? So I've got everything enabled here, but you can fine tune this list. So if you didn't want a parent to be able to update their dietary needs, then you can turn that bit off. Um, but simply if I want to go in and I want to change a telephone number, it's a tap, student telephone number, I can see what's there already. If I tap, I can amend it or I can add a new one, okay? And just to reiterate what I said during my presentation, once the parent has done that, it goes back to an administrator in the school to approve that change. So it's not going to get written back to your database unless you say yes. Okay? Uh, possibly, yeah, yeah, no, but it's just there is that extra layer of for you, and it's very quick to accept them. You don't, it doesn't take any time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I seem to remember when hearing that when changes come into the school, you get notified that there's a change, but you don't necessarily know what it is. I, I is think you do know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Liam, you can tell me that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Even yeah. with the light version? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll touch this in a minute, but I'll answer your question. You can see down here, the top bit relates to Chris, okay? The bottom bit where it says contacts relates to the person that I'm logged on as. And you'll notice that I can only see me. But I'll touch on that in a minute when we look at the admin portal. So I can go in and I can change my own details. Can you, if you use SIMS for report but not through SIMS, can you upload? You can upload things into SIMS, yeah. So if you're publishing, that's right, isn't it? You can upload a document into SIMS, I think, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might take you a bit longer, but you can, you can do that, yeah. So does it let SIMS do anything? You have to publish it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, and I'm very, very quickly, because I'm conscious of time, that we're running out of, um, I am going to show you the admin part. So very quickly, uh, the admin is a web-based product, so you log into it, PC, tablet, whatever. Um, you can change the colors. This is where it doesn't want to work. Ugh. Bear with me. There we go, right. So I can change the colors, I can add some graphics if I want to. Very, very simple. If I go into settings, um, you'll notice across the top where I'm tapping now, those are the corresponding bits in the app itself. All of them you can turn on or off. Okay, so if I didn't want to publish any assessment stuff, I don't have to, I can just go no. And that's it, it removes that widget from the, from the screen. Um, and I can say which mark sheets I want to publish. So again, I'm not just publishing all of it. Um, if I go into attendance, again, I can choose to turn on or off lesson attendance. I can choose to show the comments if you're using those. Um, and if I go into conduct, it might be that as a school, you make the decision just to publish the positive stuff, so the achievement stuff, so you can turn off the behavior or you can turn it on. Um, and you can change whether you want to show the comments or the teacher's name just by tapping on the so again, they're decisions for you to make, really. Okay. Um, just to point out, down on the right side, that help screen gives you a really detailed explanation of what it is you are turning on or off effectively. Okay. Data collection. So you can enable it. Again, turn it on or off. Um, the next two buttons are the ones to answer your question. So at the moment, you can see it says contact can see only self. So if you say yes to that, that means that they can only see the contact information for themselves, not for another parent or not for another contact, okay? The other one there is contact must live at same address. So that means that the contact must live at the same address to change any of the student-related information. If they do not live at the same address as the student, then they can't do it, okay? Um, and what we've chosen to do at Honiton is we have both of those as yes, but you may well choose something different. But, um, and the sections there are just enabling what bits of SIMS you want the parents to be able to change themselves.
Okay. Um, the next sections are fairly straightforward. Homework, on or off. Reports, on or off. And then school diary, um, you literally are just saying what categories of the diary you want to publish. Um, and it doesn't get any harder than that. Um, it's very, very easy to configure. Okay.